What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to our channel. It's your girl, Bex. And I'm Carly. And we're bringing new content designed to unlock your mindset and your actions to be limitless. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And like we always say, ring the bell notification so you can get notified when we're dropping videos just like this. All right, so today we're going to be following on from last week's video um, where we covered Colette um, DeVito um, and we're going to do another person with a physical disability and this week that is Nick Vujicic uh, who's an Australian American born without arms or legs who has become a world-renowned speaker New York Times best-selling author coach and entrepreneur so Nick faced tremendous obstacles in life from living life without limbs to being bullied at school and fearful for his future with no purpose in sight. Without hope, uh, his feelings of helplessness and isolation led him to attempt suicide. Nick persevered through life's challenges and discovered key principles which enabled him to find his purpose and turn obstacles into opportunities, making him one of the most sought after keynote speakers in the world. Millions of people have found hope, purpose, and the strength to overcome their challenges through Nick's inspirational speeches and powerful coaching. So he's also found the, the founder and CEO of a non-profit ministry called Life Without Limbs. Um, he's married and he's the father of four children. Um, Nick's passion is to inspire and equip the world to know that we all can rise above adversity and overcome every disability of the heart and mind. Incredible incredible and we'll touch on some of the stuff that he's gone on to do um and it's just really inspiring you know like and I, I think I read somewhere that he was you know just saying all the time like I wish I had um arms and legs and all the rest of it right and when he attempted suicide I think he was a young kid right yeah he was pretty young yeah he, he was at it was like school age and it just goes back to what we said um last week about the bullying and you know he's dedicated his life now to to help with bullying and one of the other innovations is the social emotional um learning where it's termed or deemed attitude um is altitude and i really like that because it's like how do you get yourself to above where you're where, to a place where you're above that right so yeah. you know what i mean if you can work on your attitude work on your mindset when you're faced with adversity you can all you can just ultimately or just basically just elevate yourself straight away do you get what i'm saying so you rise above everything that people are saying towards you he's also been featured on massive platforms such as bbc 60 minutes australia CBS Sunday Morning, Oprah's Life Class, also TED Talks as well. Now, whilst that sounds amazing, and it is amazing, that didn't come with ease. For example, when he first started speaking, he applied or rang up 52 schools in Australia in order to come and speak, and every single one of them hung up the phone. That's yeah. wild. 52 rejections so this is the thing and we've talked about it before that you always just have to keep putting one step in front of the other because your break will come i think his first speaking gig was in front of six people oh really to like yeah it was six wow. people then hundreds then hundreds of thousands i think his biggest gig was eight hundred thousand people face to face i couldn't do that i'd melt wow way too many people for me <laughs> way too many people and you know success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm success is doing the thing that you wanted to said you were going to do long after the feeling has passed Absolutely. so when you have those rejections right in the beginning you're like yeah i'm going to go and speak at schools but guess what you keep getting knocked back you keep getting knocked back but you have to have that same enthusiasm before you even made that first call 100 percent. and i think a lot of that, like you're saying, is driven by is driven by your why and the value. Like imagine just imagine being him already um, in a lot of ways. You already feel like you're behind everyone. You need more support in certain things and other people do. And then you now try and you've got this big vision in mind. But you know, because of the impact that you're, can, you can have on people's lives, 
that's what I reckon kept him going because you, you know, no matter how many times we say no, 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 it's that yeah. bigger picture thinking. How many people would have quit after three people said no? Yeah. Easily, just three, never mind 52. I didn't even know that about him. But he never really thought about being a speaker. I think it was a, a janitor or somebody at yeah. school said to him, yeah. oh, you're going to be a speaker one day. And he's like, yeah, whatever. Didn't even think about it. But it's like a lot of people say, I was watching a video the other day, it was just a, a music video and they were talking about talents and a lot of people don't realise their talent because in their head, a talent is singing, dancing, acting. That's a talent. Well, no, communication's a talent. Being mm. able to listen is a, a talent. Like like they were saying, like you've got a, that sibling that'll go, no, you tell mum, you tell mum, you're better. Because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just better at saying things than you are. Like a lot of the time in order to find what you're good at, Ask your peers. They know, oh, I would go to Bex for this. I'd go to Carly for that. Um, and just, he's seen that. And then people are going, you're funny. You've got charisma. Like the way you speak and your story, do you know how many people you can touch with that? And look what he's gone on to do. I know he's a, a Christian, he's a devout Christian. And he really focuses, I think most of his speaking is on like young adults, children, etc. And they absolutely love him. And just going back to what you said about like the talents, right? And I think all of us probably, even people watching this, is it is very difficult to because you you automatically think, oh, what can I do sporting yeah. wise? Or I, I can't sing or I can't dance or whatever it is. And just um when you said about the janitor said to him that um, you know, he would speak, one of the things that he started noticing after um, you know, the janitor, I'm not sure if it was after, but what he did start noticing at school is that he was becoming quickly the person that people would speak to, you know, on the side, like for example, if they got kicked off of the game or, you know, they had to sit out or whatever it is, he found himself being the person that was able to G that other person up wow. and he started to notice that you know, he, he could have an impact with his words. Yeah. I love that. I love the humour that he puts into saying, I, I was watching a few of his interviews and he's just, it, uh, he turns his disability into humour, talking about, yeah, waving his arms around or people love um, giving him a, a high five and stuff like that. And and the, the, the interview said, why do you, you know, why do you think so many people are drawn to you? And he's just like, they really feel they can tell me anything and be so open with me someone that can go through as much as he's gone through and achieve so much mm -hmm. like the inspiration is incredible and, and we'll share some some videos on here with some of the stuff still playing golf still playing football with his children swimming like he's found a way he, he taught himself how to type um you know how to to, to write things he's got a full-time yeah, care now because very, so sorry to text as well. Yeah, to text, everything. He's just like, okay, I can't do this, that and the other, but what can I do? And like we were talking in that last uh, last um, week's video, like there's ways around things. Mm. Things can be adapted in certain ways. And he's just looked at it like that and gone, well, yeah, I can still achieve and do. So let me just find a way of doing that. And it's going to inspire so many people um, around the world. It really is. And he already is. And Absolutely. It's it is really incredible it's because amazing. sometimes you have to, it's not about comparisons, but sometimes you actually have to take a look at yourself, right? Because as an able, not like able-bodied, but like, you know, we, we have, we don't have these physical limitations or mental limitations in, in the respect of like learning difficulties or anything like that. And it's just like, we really should be so grateful and thankful for what yeah. we have and leverage what we have because you have to find your own potential. You, but like what you said, right? Your talent is not necessarily my talent and it doesn't necessarily have to be football or basketball or something like that. And I actually had a conversation today at work about this and um, I was speaking to someone about data analysis, analysis and I was saying, oh, you know, you're so good at the data analysis. Like, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. And he just said, like, God gave you the tools that you've got. Find a way to leverage what you have, yeah. right? Like, don't worry about what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm, I might get there a bit quicker, but guess what? You're doing the same thing well. Like, it's just a little bit of a different way. And it's, and it's one of the things that um, Nick's parents, when he was growing up, they said to him, we don't know what you can and can't do. Yeah. We're not going to say that you can do this and you can't, and you can't do that. 
go out there and f- and see what you can do. Try everything. Yeah. Safely, obviously. But we can't say that you've got any limitations. We don't know what your limitations are. So just go out there and just and just go for it. Try, and go, he's do done it. Yeah. Like, imagine if he was just like, I can't swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he wouldn't be a swimmer or a skydiver or a painter and all the rest of the things, right? It's just, yeah. oh man. This so is the thing. That's Being incredible what you're man. saying about the parents, though, because that's the, the second person now where their parents have sowed that seed into their mind of just go and 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 do it like he he freely admitted like his parents were in a dark place when he was mm. there, like what do we do here yeah but they quickly had to be like right okay we need to figure this out and uh, it's i'm i'm so happy for him that he was able to grow up in that environment that to be pushed and like you say we don't know but we will support you and give you that platform and help wherever we can in order for you to find what you can and really push the boundaries. Um, and even even if it's your, whether it's your children, whether it's a friend, family member, whatever it is, if you've got that opportunity to support someone to to really push and help them to find that that thing they're good at, or you know, support them in whatever way it is, really, really go and do it absolutely man and it's just like he's been able to travel to 74 countries and speak all over the world right that that's that to me is incredible and he was saying things like what are you defined by who are you you are unique there's nobody else like you that's your power we already know that and you just have to keep doing your best keep going putting one foot forward and your failure is should be your classroom don't look at it as if like oh i failed at this so that's it like you know he failed 52 times but guess what he still picked up the phone again and 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 then he got he he was getting rejected by schools that he even went on to speak in front of eight hundred thousand people face to face that's wild why is eight hundred thousand people fitting anyway number one i don't know i don't even know bro like (laughs) Oh wow. It's crazy and and you know what like you you also have to be you also have to be your own biggest cheerleader and we 100%. said this good right then you can either be your own encourager or your discourager and and it's so easy like we probably talk ourselves out of so many things but okay. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you have to encourage yourself. You have to be your wingman. You have to be the advice that you would give to your friends. Take it for yourself because everybody, you know, everybody comes to you about something. And I bet there's some things that you think, oh, I need to speak to this person, that person. If you just take yourself out of yourself and have, have a conversation with yourself, even if you write it down or whatever, you give yourself some good advice. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just have to push yourself. But you know what's crazy though? The amount of people who talk themselves out of doing stuff because they're worried about what other people think. That's the worst part about it. Like, just caring so much about what other people are going to say or think about you. Like, that alone, that, as we've talked about it before, even Instagram alone, like people, the way they come across and you think mm. this and that about them because they want you to see them in a certain certain way. Like, just don't worry, stop focusing on other people, focus on yourself. What is it you want to achieve? What is the value that you're adding? And just, just focus on that. Honestly, forget what other people are saying. Like how many people probably think what we're doing isn't isn't good or yeah. oh, they'll never get anywhere. Well, well, fine. Okay, if that's your opinion, fine. But we're not gonna stop doing it because we think we're adding value. And if we touch one person, one person watches this and goes, wow, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm going for it. Then that's it. Done, isn't it? Done. And it's, and it's, there's a reason why they sit there. Like, there's a reason why, like, you know, I think, it, is it horses and stuff? And they have the blinkers on so they can't yeah, see what's can't going see. on beside them, right? Yeah. Don't look left or right. You just go and you stay in your lane and you got to keep going because we've been subject to it of thinking about what other people are going to say to us. And honestly, like, all the glitters is not gold. Yeah, absolutely. People, oh, gosh. Like, social media is wild. The way that people are pers- are portraying things, yeah. when you get to go to the nitty gritty, 
it's nothing like it's it nothing <laughs> like that the picture that they show on instagram is not what real life is yeah. don't get disheartened yeah. you know we've seen and that the stuff people have posted and actually we know the behind the scenes and that and we're like mm, that's not actually what it is yeah. and, and this is the thing but it doesn't matter like yeah. but don't then pit yourself against exactly. what you see on instagram because yeah. ultimately like you know if if nick was like being constrained by what everybody else would say like oh you you probably can't do this or you probably can't do that or have you ever done this or whatever like he might decide to doubt himself but he didn't have all of that around him do you know what i mean like he, he was just you know obviously he was bullied and stuff but the positivity from the home that yeah. you go and do whatever the hell you want to go and do he's taken that on and, and gone leaps and bounds man yeah He's Why? incredible, isn't he? It's, it's, he really it's, is. I love watching his interviews. Like he's so positive and just like thankful. Yes. Yeah. So such so a grateful. humble guy. So humble. Like we talked about gratitude before. We talked about attitude, and he just everything. Just he just embodies the whole thing, mm -hmm. and just you can just see, you know, he, the mindset is so so important, and it is it's really like the strongest. The strongest mm. thing to work on is why, like we would say, you need to protect protect your mind. Absolutely. And like in terms of your mind, right? Your body has limitations. It's easy and as simple as that, right? But your mind does not. Like you can think whatever you want to think. If you're not mentally ready, you can never be physically prepared. And so if we go back to Nick, it was all mental. Yeah, because he had to be—he had to have it in his mind that he was going to be able to do X, Y, Z, and then he went and did it, even though his body may not have seemed like it was going to be able to to carry out whatever it is that he went and did. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a quote he said that I really like: "Was fear is the, fear is the biggest disability of all. It will paralyze you more than being in a wheelchair." That's coming, oh mate, honestly. And that's the end of our video. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Like we always say, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I've been your girl, Bex. And I've been Carly. Again, thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. And we will see you next week. Peace.